This week's Nifty Gifties on F5 Live Refreshing Technology is proudly powered by the Microsoft Store. Whether you're looking for a new laptop, tablet, Xbox, games, or a whole lot more, you can get them at the Microsoft Store. Remember, current students, faculty, parents, and active military can save up to 10% off almost everything. To browse the products and learn more about the discounts, you can go to f5live.tv slash Microsoft. Longtime listeners of the show know that I have uh, been a fan of augmented reality, mixed reality, whatever, whatever the industry wants to call it this week. Um, and I have been a supporter of the hardware. Just out of frame over here is a, a, a Microsoft HoloLens. Um, however, I didn't get behind the Apple Vision Pro. There were a couple things about it that just didn't quite uh, click for me. Uh, I think part of it was the fact that it's unlike the HoloLens. There's, you know, physical screens at, that you can't see through. And when you're seeing the real world, you're not actually seeing the real world. You're seeing through cameras. I, I'm not a big fan of that. You know, the Oculus does it. The the Vision Pro does it. I, I don't know. That doesn't do it for me, um, but it's an Apple product, so I did suspect that I would be maybe in the minority on those feelings, but it seems that maybe I'm not. Um, a report this week says that Apple has been so disappointed by the sales of the device that they've actually cut shipments, uh, which essentially means that they've asked the manufacturers to produce less uh, because they're not selling them. Most stores, uh, according to um, some of the, uh, the the retail sales analysts, most stores are selling maybe two or three a week um, when Apple expected to be selling way more than that. The initial launch saw, you know, Apple fans uh, going and buying them the first day or two, uh, but since then, apparently sales have dropped off steeply. Um, down to where I think they probably expected them to be more than a year out, and we are far from a year out. Um, so, I don't know. It it seems like maybe it was an over-ambitious product for Apple, which they're known for. Um, they um, came out with a Pro version first, which I think maybe was maybe far too expensive. Uh, instead of focusing on a consumer product, what do you think, Abram? Do you do you think they went wrong? Do you think there's a problem here? Hmm. What do you think? I mean, we were having this. Dis it's funny you mention. We we're having a dis. Uh, when we get to the pilch point, it will be somewhat related to this because we'll be talking about a couple of products that mm -hmm. sort of are new, a new category, and unfinished uh come to market kind of unfinished and at work we were talking about this and we said well other companies like apple and samsung can afford to launch a product that is sort of a first generation and fails uh, -huh. uh and then they can make a, a second generation device. that's not that's not a fail or something like that and they can keep you know they can build build up right yeah so yeah. In, in that spirit perhaps this is a success uh i mean technically speaking the the device is i mean from people i haven't got to use it but people i know used it 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 does what it says right like it mm -hmm. uh it, it gives you this virtual space it allows you to you know kind of interact with things in in the environment um i mean the whole like thing where you're supposed to see somebody's fake eyeballs through through it is is ridiculous freaky uh, but free and also doesn't seem to work very well because mm. i had some people in the office wearing it and i couldn't see their fake eyeballs um oh. which so like why even bother with that so I mean, if that added like $200 to the cost, they shouldn't have done it. But, mm -hmm. um, 
But other than that, um, I mean, it it kind of delivers what it says. Now the question is, so it's tech and it technically astute product, right? But it's it. I think it has two problems, and they're both huge problems. Uh-huh. One problem is that. I don't think, and I would love to get a survey of people who bought it. How much are you, a month in, how much are you using it? I'm going to guess that a lot of people bought it who, I wouldn't say a lot of people who could afford it, bought it. They said, oh, this is cool. This is the future. I'm going to be an early adopter ahead of the curve and, and buy this thing. And it was... How much is it? Four thousand dollars? Thirty five hundred dollars? Thirty five. Thirty five hundred dollars. Same, same as the Hololens was. Right. Thirty five hundred dollars. Um, so, you know, and then the question is, OK, so I've tried all the things that it can do, like watch a movie or whatever. What am I going to do? Am I going to do these? Is this going to be my new normal now? Am I going to watch movies like this every day? Am I going to like send emails like this every day? Uh, I'm going, I bet that most people who, even though it's capable of doing all those things, I bet a lot of people came to the conclusion that like, this is a little bit bulky and awkward. And I don't know that I want to make like walking around with this headset a part of my life. Um, and so I bet a lot of them took it and put it in a drawer and said, oh, I, I plan to use this. Mm-hmm. But then every day when there's a chance for them to use it, they're probably like, oh, you know, what? I'll use it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right? Tomorrow. So uh, sort of like me with gym memberships and exercise machines. So anyway, the, um, the, the, so the, so the point, the point is, I'm, I think a lot of people who, who were going to buy this bought this at the beginning. They bought it with the best of intentions. Mm-hmm. Uh but then after using it, they were probably like, well, I don't know how this fits into my uh, daily routine, into my daily right. life. And then it was also for that. It's also thirty five hundred dollars. Right. So the bar of people who were going to use it was always a very high bar to, to clear with that price. And then on top of that, you really it's something that's very technically impressive but after you've been impressed with it is it something that's going to you know to change your your daily tech life are you going to wear it every day are you going or every week even are you going to use it which is why i always tell people that like the best things you can invest in with your computer is stuff that you know you're going to touch uh every day so like you know it's worth it to spend a lot of money on a mouse because you're touching that all day, right? It's worth it to spend a lot of money on your monitors Mm -hmm. because you're looking at them all day, right? right? Those, it's worth it to spend 20 bucks and get a comfy wrist rest because you're touching it all day. So the question is, if you buy something, if you buy a new category of product, is this going to work into your lifestyle, Right. right? And uh, I, you know, I have, I don't know if anyone's done a survey of this, but I would bet that a lot of the people who spent good money to buy it probably said, oh, this is cool, but I'm not using it every day. I'm not probably not using it much at all. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, my, I have my technological issues with it, um, partially because I can't, I can't spend extended periods of time in an environment where I'm looking at a screen that close before my eyes start to cross and I get Mm -hmm. nauseous. Um, But yeah, same. But even with the HoloLens, which is not that right. I never found that wearing it all the time was, was the thing I got it for some development purposes. I got it because there's some fun games on it. We've talked about doing some, you know, unique streams with it. But in general, I bought it as a toy. I knew what I was getting when I got it, and I did not buy it at thirty five hundred. Right? I I waited until I could get it on eBay for five hundred dollars. 
Right. And at that, at that point, it's like, you know, look, people, I mean, people spend money on stuff all the time for, you know, to collect it, to try it, whatever. I mean, a few weeks, I, I think I mentioned this in the last Filch Point a few weeks ago, I was at a vintage computer festival and people were paying like $300 for a Commodore 64. <laughs> so like, so to spend $500 on a HoloLens, I think is a great deal. But um, if you have something you can do with it, Right. So I think, right, like, but this, I mean, look, if I were Elon Musk or something, I would have spent my money on buying two of those and rather than buying Twitter. Uh, but, um, you know, because probably value is about the same now. But, um, <laughs> but the, um, you know, but I think most regular people, can't afford to be throwing money around like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, 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 what were they expecting to sell? I mean, I wouldn't expect to sell many of those. See, I think there was a, there was a mismatch between consumers and Apple on what the device was going to be. I think consumers saw it as a fancy Oculus and have treated it as such. And I think Apple thought that it was going to be the next iPhone. It was the thing that people were going to interact with all the time. Uh, and so they designed it and priced it as such. And I think that mismatch is where they've gotten themselves in trouble. I think that mismatch is the problem because consumers were never going to be interested in that. <laughs> that was never what this product was going to be. And I think they just got right. themselves in trouble with it. Yep. Uh, so, uh, you know, the the Oculus, like the Oculus Quest, is now I think and they they raised the price, so now it's like four hundred dollars, I think, right? But you can get a Quest Two at Target right now for one and a nine. Okay, yeah, so my son has the Quest 2. We got it for him when it was for his birthday a couple of years ago, and it was two ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's to me, is a reasonable price to pay for an entertainment device. Mm-hmm. Granted, I think a lot of people aren't getting their money's worth out of those, but he does use it from not every day but he'll play with it like at least a couple few couple times a month okay. i mean his main game game to play on it is not one of the most advertised ones he plays minecraft vr on it which is not like it's it's you can there's weird ways of doing it like you use it through your pc through a mod or whatever um and there's been mobile apps that'll do it or whatever so it's it's kind of a weird thing but there's ways to do it and like that's what he wants it for right uh basically i mean like he has tried some of the other games i think he's tried beat saber and things like that so they still we're still waiting for a killer app for vr i think a killer game for vr but like oculus at like you know 200 to 400 dollars that's a point where you know, especially if they could just find a really good game, they could right. probably like have a healthy business. Not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily for everyone, but a right. healthy, a healthy entertainment business nonetheless. Uh, Twenty thirty five hundred dollars, forget it. Yeah, you know, and you know, so it's interesting that you know you mentioned the the goals of Oculus there. Um, we might finally see said, uh, killer app or game, uh, for Oculus because, uh, they just announced this week that Horizon OS is licensable and they have partnered with a number of companies, interestingly, including Microsoft. Can't wait to see what that means, um, to bring Horizon OS to, uh, other platforms, to other devices, um, uh, there's going to be an Asus ROG uh, branded device I saw. I don't know what Microsoft's intentions are. It would be really interesting to see if it if they 
backfill it to this or if they've got a, a HoloLens 3 that maybe they're thinking about. Um, I know there was hardware, but they gave up on the platform, so that made it challenging. Um, so with, with that, we could see what Microsoft tried to do and did accomplish, just didn't succeed with, right? The, the big vertical of hardware on, on Windows MR, everything from the inexpensive HP headset, I think that retailed for 200 bucks, up through and including the HoloLens at 3,500, right? They had a, mm-hmm. a stack, and for not for everyday people, there were some killer things that were done with the, with the platform. Maybe taking the Windows MR ecosystem and basically moving it over to Horizon, which seems like is what's happening, maybe now there will be more of a reason for somebody to, to build that killer something maybe i don't know but there's still not that killer thing on apple that's the thing there like you said it does everything that they said it does and that's about it (laughs) yep yep so yeah i mean i think i hope apple doesn't give up on this you know category what they need to do is they need to uh, to take, you know, to find a way to make a light version of this yeah. that is much, Messy. much, much cheaper, uh, and and also you know possibly lighter weight, uh, but definitely but definitely cheaper, um, and. And try to find a and you know find a reason for people to use it on a daily basis. Like I, I love the concept of it. Like oh, I can go around my house and there's something in this room and something in that room, which is something Hololens has, right? right. Um, uh, it's a really cool cool concept and um, you know good idea. But you have to be comfortable wearing that all day, and it has to be affordable. And then. The other thing is, like when they first came out with it, they just showed all these people walking around wearing it uh, mm-hmm. and like playing soccer with their kids and stuff. Thirty five hundred dollars. I'm not. I'm not gonna take that thing outside. Are you kidding me? What if somebody kicks the soccer ball, hits me in the face? Right. With my thirty five hundred dollar gadget. Which, by the way, the repair costs on this is very. They, I think they've listed it very high. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, yeah, I mean, it's not realistic. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the battery life is a problem, which is really interesting. Um, because Apple has this weird relationship with battery life. The MacBooks mm. seem to run on magic or something. Um, and then everything else they make seems to run on alkaline batteries or something. I don't know. Lead acid. Cause they, no, lead acid would be better than alkaline. Let's go with alkaline. Cause like every other product they make, the battery life is garbage. And then the MacBooks, like I was holding one the other day and I said to my brother, I'm like, you know, who could learn a lesson from Apple is Apple. Uh, so the, ba- the battery life is a problem. They're heavy, as was the HoloLens, and bulky. Um, and they're expensive, and there's no killer thing. I, they, they've got to figure out what they want this to be. Because it either... The, the first generation iPhone was also, you know, had nothing you could do. It wasn't interesting, and, you know certain people bought them and they're like, but what is this? Um, and then eventually they figured it out. Right. Um, so they need to figure out what it's supposed to be because it could become the next iPhone or it could become the next Newton. They could be so focused on the minutia nonsense that they never actually make the product useful for anybody, which is what happened to the Newton. Or they could go, aha, we see the error of our ways, and it could be the next iPhone. I don't know. 
Yeah. There's there's definitely potential there. And as again, as somebody who loves mixed reality or augmented reality or whatever we, we want to call it today, um, I want more pe- I want somebody to succeed in the space because nobody has. Magic Leap was a failure, I think, because of the CEO. Uh, the Hololens was a failure, I think, because of the CEO. <laughs> and so so far. Uh, this thing has not been uh, the success that Apple wanted. So hopefully somebody can make this work. Apple could do it. Like you said, they have the ability to throw money after nonsense until they get it right. So hopefully uh, they figure out how to get it right. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of F5 Live Refreshing Technology. If you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel down below, and of course, hit the notification bell, because we know that subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, If you've got topics that you'd like us to talk about in the future, please uh, comment them down below. And if you'd like to not follow us on YouTube, there's lots of ways that you can follow along with our content by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all of the ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.